Okay, let's talk about object inheritance in JavaScript. The first thing you need to know about this is that JavaScript uses prototype uh, prototype inheritance as opposed to what we call classical inheritance, which is what Java and C++ and all those other languages use. Inheritance. Um, so what's the difference? Well, in classical inheritance, like in Java, you define a class, say a class of, called person, and then at runtime you say Bob is of type person, this other guy is of type person. In prototype inheritance, there is no such thing as a general class, although JavaScript does a lot of things to try to convince you that there is, uh, but there isn't. Uh, and uh, you just have Bob, and then you say, well, Bob is a prototype person, and then Alice is like Bob, except that these other things are different. And you know, Charlie is like Bob, except that these other things are different. So there is no class. Uh, there is There are only people. Right? There are only objects. There is no classes. So let's see how we do that. So, you know, you might start, you can say Bob is an object, right? So Bob is an empty object. And Bob uh, is, we're going to give him a name, Bob. Uh, the semicolon is there. Bob, and we're going to give him method. Say hi. It's a function that doesn't take any arguments, and he just writes out to the, law, the console, hi. Uh, my name is... And then I'm going to say this dot name. So you see what I did there, right? I created an object called Bob that, you know, it's empty. I give him an attribute called name and then another attribute called say hi. Name is his value is a string. The other one, its value is a function. And uh, this function uses this funky keyword this, and this is, this is the same, pretty similar to this in Java. So this is going to resolve to the caller object, in this case, Bob. So let's look at, this is the script file that's loaded by this page here. So here I have Bob. And, and uh, so you see Bob has a name and it's got this say hi function. So when I say Bob.name, I get his name. When I say Bob.say hi and invoke that, I get, it runs and it prints hi, my name is Bob. There you go. So now let's say we wanted to implement, you know, we that say hi function. We wanted we want to create a bunch of people, Bob, Alice, and Charlie, and we want all of them to inherit that say hi function. So the way you do that in JavaScript is, uh, you know, you go back up here and, uh, you know, you organize things a little bit better. You say a person a function person, and we're going to use capital letters. So we're going to say the way we talk about this is we say that th this is a constructor, right? So it's just a function, right? But uh, we're going to call it a constructor and we're going to give it a capital letter, capital P, person, um, just, you know, by tradition. So, and then we're going to say this dot name is his name, right? You remember that from a Java constructor. So, and that's it. Then we have the issue of uh, the method, and that one is a little trickier. The person dot prototype dot say hi is that. I'm gonna grab all that, put it over here, and then I'm gonna say Bob is a new person with the name of Bob. And hopefully it will work. No, pro prototype. That's better. So, so that's how it works. So you have a constructor function, and then the methods. Uh, this is how you you have to put the methods for that person, right? So person dot prototype. That word is special, and dot, and then the method name. And you can have other. You can add more methods. You know, person dot prototype dot say goodbye. Person dot prototype dot whatever. 
I'm just gonna do one. Let me just make sure this works first. I'm gonna reload that. So a Bob is now, it tells me that it's a person that has the name of Bob. And you see it's got this proto here, uh, link that then points to the say hi. So basically, if I, if I say Bob.name, that's gonna work like that. Bob.say hi. That's gonna work. Okay, now let's do another one. Let's say Alice is a new person called Alice. Uh, reload the page and Alice dot say hi. Hi, my name is Alice, and Bob says hi. So that worked, right? So both Bob and Alice inherit uh, that say hi method. Right? And so the way this actually works, and you can see it here if I print Alice, the object, you can see Alice has this. You know, invisible, you know, underscore, underscore prototype link, um, which, um, you know, within here you can actually follow. Uh, but um, what happens is when I say Alice dot say hi, you know, the Alice object itself only has a name, right? So Alice is a person that has a name. It doesn't have any say hi property. So how come this, this actually works? Well, what JavaScript does is if Alice doesn't have a say hi property, it's gonna JavaScript interpreter is gonna follow this proto link and look for a say hi there. Right? And that's what happened. So there was no say hi here, but it followed this one here and it found a say hi function. So what that means is that I can uh, I can say Alice dot say hi. I could rewrite this thing at runtime. I can say Alice say hi. I'm gonna give it a new function. Console.log Alice rule. Right. And then when I say Alice dot say hi, invoke that Alice rules, right? Because now if you look at the Alice object, Alex has a name and it has a say hi function. So the interpreter is going to find that one, say, Poop, I'm done. So when I invoke Alice.say hi, it finds that and done. And so it never goes all the way. You see, this one's still there, but it never gets there because it stops at the first one. Right? Um, so that's how that works. You know, um, looking back over here, what the new, see the new keyword, what this new keyword does uh, is, well, let me go back up. Notice that you know there is no class person. There's only a function called person, right? And this function, you know, called person is this one. And then this function itself, because the functions are first class objects, you know, right? remember in Java. So I can say function, function person dot prototype. So this is just a property of person uh, object. So the prototype. And under that prototype, there's a say hi pro um, property, and which has this value. So the prototype property of an object is special, right? And that's special because the is the one that the JavaScript interpreter is going to use to follow, you know, when you do this invocation business. Uh, but all we're doing here is creating a function called person and setting its prototype property to this. That's all we're doing. So when the new, when we get to the new, the new keyword, what it does, it invokes this function, the person function. It invokes that function, and then uh, it creates a new empty object uh, before it does it. You know, it creates a new empty object and sets, you know, uses sets that pr this is that object, and so it says all those properties based on what you do here, and then at the end it sets that object's prototype. Um, to the function person prototype. So another way to uh, view this is do you know more straightforward prototype inheritance, and uh, this is uh, you know championed by Douglas Crockford. Um, so it's with this function. So I'm going to do this business here. Uh, F, and so I'm creating a new function that does nothing. 
and setting a product its product type prototype uh, to be O, which is the object that I just got passed, and then I'm going to return new uh, L. And so I'm going to call that new function to that. So what is this? This, you know, this is the object inheritance, if you call it, function. Um, so this is another, this is, you know, really more, you know, this, this new here that JavaScript gives us tries to simulate classical inheritance. And you can see it does that you know, fairly well. And so this looks familiar to you if you're used to Java or C++. This one, what it does is it's going to tell me that, you know, the returning object is an in, is um, inherits from O. So it's object inheritance. So what does that mean? Uh, let me go back over here and just give you an example. So, okay, now I have Alice, right? Alice is the person and she's got that, you know, stuff. So Alice.say hi, says hi, and then, you know, if I decide, decide to rewrite that as I did before, I'll say hi as a function. Alice rules. Close, close, close. And uh, uh, so now Alice rules. Now let's say I want to write a Tom, and I want Tom to be like Alice, not a person, well, not like a general, the other person, person, but I want Tom to be like Alice. I can say Tom is uh, inherits from Alice. Basically, that's what I'm saying. So when Tom says hi now, He's going to say Alice rules, right? Because if you look at Tom's object, F, right? So his proto goes to Alice. So that, that's that say hi. And then Alice, is, of course, goes to uh, the person function. Right? But this this is a more standard way of doing prototypal, prototype inheritance. We can just say that one object just gets another object's methods and attributes, right? So Tom.name is Alice, right? Of course, I can change that. Tom.name is Tom. Once I do that, then, you know, Tom.name is now Tom, right? Because if we look at the object, we see that once again, now Tom has a name property associated with him, so he doesn't have to go up the prototype to find the next one, Alice. So it all depends whether you choose to do it this way, like most people choose to do it this way, and this works. You know, as long as you have only one level of inheritance, you can't really easily do more than that. Uh, this works uh, better when you have you have more complicated scenarios. You have objects inheriting from other objects and changing uh, various things. So kind of depends on what you want to do for your project.